I see that uh, only the brave remain in the room for the, the last talk of the day. So uh, I'm going to, to talk about a, a demo that we did for our booth with uh, Qt3D, the Qt3D uh, CAD demo. And I will uh, quickly launch it and then uh, try to explain the, the main concepts and the main things that we used for uh, this particular demo. So that, that's normal. It's just loading up. And right there, we've got it on the screen. I don't know why we've got that bottom bar, but let's not worry about that right now. So we've got 3D content, and we've got a small uh, 2D UI panel that we can use, the menu panel. And then we can play with uh, this, uh, this, the, the 3D object. When I click on a button, I open a small 2D panel, and I get access to uh, sliders and other uh, Qt Quick panels. So we can start our engine, ready for takeoff. And we've got uh, other options, such as seeing the explodate view of our uh, jet engine, opening the various calls, and a nice feature that uh, we often find in uh, in software and you in high-end software and where you've got to add quite a bit of money, and that's uh, clipping planes. And so we've got uh, planes that we can use to cut our jet engine and see we uh, see the inside and play with that. So that's uh, that's it for uh, the demo. So now we will look quickly. Uh, Oh, this was done. So as you've seen, we've got small panels, the menu buttons that we can open. All of those have been made with the Qt Quick controls and a few, uh, a few styles that we added, mostly inspired from Android. If you don't know how to design, open the Android uh, material page on Google, and you'll get a, a pretty good start. And on Another side, we've got our 3D content. And if I show the code, we've got a main.qml with an item, all the 2D panels. And in our scene content.qml file, we've got the Qt3D parts. So far, so good. Now we need to make a link between the 3D content and the 2D UI. And for that, if you've not seen the, the talk that Sean Armour made uh, previously, we use a scene 3D element right there. So the scene 3D element is the link between Qt Quick and Qt 3D. And that allows us to render our 3D content within our, 3D, uh, our 2D window using Qt Quick. So now let's move on to uh, the actual 3D content. We see that we've got an entity. Entity is the uh, item that we've got in Qt 3D. Lots of properties, a camera, a configuration, a frame graph. We are going to see what the frame graph is in a second. And a background, and then another entity. And we can see that we've got a jet. Jet is uh, another entity that contains all the elements that make up our jet engine. And we've got the engine stand and clipping planes, the red, green, and blue planes that you saw when we were cutting up uh, the mesh. So let's move back to the slides quickly. You can see that sin 3 d is the link between Qt Quick and Qt 3D. And let's get back to the frame graph. The frame graph is uh, another tree in a Qt 3D scene that allows us to configure the renderer, to configure when we want the uh, OpenGL renderer to clear the buffers, what size is our viewport. We can use the, that frame graph to build up a custom tree that we then use to, uh, in our demo. Uh, how does that work? That work by creating a subtree and looking for the leaf nodes. 
the leaf nodes there are green, and they, they are passed from the leaf node to the root, and we build what we call render views. So let's focus on the uh, layer filter with jet uh, leaf node and see what that does for us. What that does is create a viewport, a state set, viewport, camera selector, and layer filter. So if we look back to this diagram, we can see that all the states, all the elements that have been defined above us are taken into account for this render view. And we do that for each leaf node. And you can see that by just encapsulating a few nodes, we can create a custom frame graph. And the custom frame graph we've got for our demo basically does, we clear the buffers, we draw the background, then we draw the jet engine, draw uh, the other elements, such as the engine stand, and finally draw the clipping planes. Now, for the interesting part, which is the actual clipping, how does that work? First, we've got uh, a shader. A shader is a, a program that is executed on the graphic card for every pixel. Let, let's simplify it, and yeah. For every pixel, we've got a program executed. And for that program, we defined a structure. You can see that we've got a struct section and then a struct section data. Section will define our clipping plane. It has a center and an equation. And section da data will contain a few of those sections. And what happens in that program is that given the equation and the center, we can detect if our pixel is in front or behind the plane. And given the, these information, we can decide either to show it or to discard uh, the pixel. Now, of course, I need to populate these structures and ideally from QML. And for that, we can use uh, a cute 3D object with, which is called shader data. And what we're doing is recreating the same structure on the QML side, just using the property shader data and giving it values. So you can see that on one side, we've got right there, we've got the count. Ah, sorry. I'm going too quick there. We've got the count. On the other side, we've got the count, and we assign it a value. And the same thing for all the properties, which allows us to populate the values of our program in GLSL from QML. And at runtime, those values will be automatically transferred to the GPU. And in order to do that, we've got the parameter. The parameter allows us to specify for that given shader, we want the variable named section data to, to take the value that we give it as a parameter. So I can quickly go back to the code and show you that clipping planes are just an entity that shows the plane, the, the yeah, plane. <laughs> a rectangle by which we are trying to cut our mesh. It has got a center, a normal, and a, a few other properties. And we use those properties to build up our shader data structure right there. And then in our jet object, which is an entity that contains several meshes, several sub-objects, we'll see that there is somewhere a section data in a parameter. And right there, we're just setting the value for the uniform, the value, the variable in our shader that is called section data. And Qt3D takes care of automatically populating the structure that we define in the shader using the QML value. And that's it for the presentation. I, if you want to, to know more about the demo or play with it in real time, please go to the KDAP booth. And if you've got other questions related to Qt3D or anything else, please, please come to, to the booth or anywhere if we, we can cross one another and, and discuss. Thank you for listening, and 
Please enjoy the, the party tonight.